So I'm no athlete, that's why I became a magician. But I love watching athletes use the principles of magic and the psychology of deception to fool the other players and score those extra points. Now you might have seen this happen recently with North Texas player Keegan Brewer faking out the fair catch and running all the way down for the touchdown. He's he never made a fair catch. Oh, he did make a fair catch signal. He's gone. Brewer down the sideline. This is going to be a touchdown. And I found this so fascinating because he clearly uses magic principles. And it's not just him, but the whole team that designed this play in order to fool the opposing team. So there's two parts to this athletic deception. First is using your opponent's expectations against you. And the way Keegan does this is through his body's tension. And magicians do this all the time. We communicate on and off points of relaxation through our shoulders and our body. We use our tension to make an audience pay attention to something. And whereas some people think that magicians use misdirection to make you go look, oh, hey, look over there. Instead, this is a form of misdirection through a non-action. By lowering the tension, by pretending that the whole play was over, he lulled the other team into thinking, okay, well, the play's done. And they didn't even assume, hey, wait a minute, what happened with the whistle? They just kind of stopped and thought, okay, everything's done. And they were fooled by their own expectations. One of them actually asked me, why didn't they blow the whistle? And I just, I didn't say anything. I was, <laughs> and I was just like, oh, I don't know. So then as soon as he passed me, I knew it was go time. So. A key aspect of creating uh, misperceptions is our assumptions. You know, the first player ran up and he assumed that because the player had relaxed that the play was over, he didn't even think about the whistle. The second player that ran up assumed that the first player made the right call. Those assumptions all ended up leading them astray. Now, the moment that I saw this play happen, I right away was wondering, well, was this just a one-off thing? Did he make it up himself? Was he planning to do it? And I was so pleasantly blown away to hear that they had been rehearsing this play. It was a whole team effort because we were playing, we worked on it all week, actually like more in a week, just trying to see how to be able to do this, execute and act like it's a fair catch so that the other team just sees that, oh, you fair caught it and then run off the field, so. And one of the key lessons here is that it wasn't just the responsibility of one person to create that perception, but the whole entire team was responsible. The other players on the field had to act like the play was pretty much over, but still be there enough in order to protect the player once he started running. The players on the side of the field also had to be in on it because if they had been misdirected, they would have run on the field earlier too. So they had to know to stand by. The coach, the other players, everyone was responsible. Just like in any organization, they were responsible working together, creating these perceptions. I, I think it's brilliant and it's exactly what magicians do. You know, you think that a magic trick just happened and you were fooled and amazed, but in reality, there's hours and hours of thought and practice brought in to create simple perceptions. I think this is an amazing example of how this team really went to think like magicians and created the false impressions in order to score that extra touchdown and win the game. And I can't wait to see what other trick plays happen this season.